Today's road trip takes us to Kissimmee, Florida. Hey everybody, Rick here, and today's video is actually a road trip and a Florida food tour. And since it's lunchtime and this place closes at two, let's start with the food. Today's lunch, the Maple Street Biscuit Company, and I can see the line is already out the door. So the menu is divided into several sections. Biscuits that wow, biscuits and gravy, waffles that wow, and entrees with a twist. And then they have shareable sides, top of the morning drinks, there's never enough coffee, regular drinks, and biscuits to go. And also, little ones, kids meals. I think I'm gonna pick something from the section biscuits that wow. They have the squawking goat for $10.50. It was featured on the Food Network, so that's very tempting. But the first menu item is called the Five and Dime, and it's $11.50, and it's called the Perfect Maple Street Experience, all on one plate. How could I refuse that? I'm going with that one. I will leave a link to the entire menu if you want to check out the whole thing. It's a little noisy inside, but it's a nice day outside, so We'll eat outside. And here is my lunch, or breakfast, or brunch, whatever you want to call it. The five and dime, $11.50. The perfect Maple Street experience, all on one plate. All natural fried chicken breast, pecan wood smoked bacon, cheddar cheese, and a fried egg topped with our house-made sausage gravy. Wow, I'm all done with my lunch now. And can I describe a a biscuit meal as decadent because I think I will. Everything on the five and dime worked. It was delicious. Uh, the fried chicken was good. The sausage gravy with a little bit of a kick. I did uh, notice the kick. That was good. But the biscuit, the biscuit was really good. So good, in fact, that I would not mind just getting like a biscuits and gravy meal. I would like to try it just like that. So good. Um, decadent, I guess a decadent biscuit meal there you go um a fun thing they do is at least for today you don't give your name at the order today it was like your favorite dance move so when your meal or your plate is ready they call you out by your dance move today i was the reebok i went with the 80s i went with the reebok and uh oh i saw someone with the waffles i was contemplating as i was eating my biscuit to go and order one of the waffle plates because it looked so good, but the biscuit meal, the chicken biscuit meal was so good and so filling, I couldn't. But I should have tried, I should have tried. It looked so good. Uh, but there you go, the Maple Street Biscuit Company. Try it out. And now on to the Museum of Military History. By the way, the museum is just like seven minutes from the uh, Maple Street Biscuit Company. One more thing about the Maple Street Biscuit Company. They're not just in Florida, they're in several states, so go check out the website and see if there's one near you. Well, we've made it, barely, as I was driving over here. Had my windows down and everything, and a big old bug flew into the Jeep. The sad thing is, or the scary thing, I did not see it exit. So I think it's still in there. We'll see if we get home alive, but we've made it to the museum okay. And here it is, the Museum of Military History. 10,000 square feet of history, in fact. And as a Jeep owner, I know there's a couple things I'm going to enjoy seeing in there. Let me point out the hours for you guys. They're closed on Mondays, but the rest of the week, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., 12 bucks to get in for adults, seniors 11, veterans and retired military 9, and you can see the rest of the pricing there. Okay, $11 later, I'm in. Time to use my museum voice. And I kind of think the museum is laid out chronologically. So the first room here is going to be the oldest looking stuff. Of course, the first bit of U.S. military history starts with the Revolutionary War. Behind glass here, we have a colonel's uniform. Actually, 
from the movie The Patriot with Mel Gibson. Several different types of uniforms displayed, along with weaponry, such as muskets. The second room we're entering, this is going to be the Civil War. So we'll have items in here from U.S. military history, and I guess the Confederate military history. This particular uniform you're looking at now, Johnny Reb, this is the common field uniform for a Confederate soldier. And behind glass here, this is the uniform of a U.S. soldier during the Civil War. We have a cannon over here, manned by some U.S. soldiers. Some more muskets or rifles, typical of the Civil War. This television, a little informational presentation going on. The next room after the Civil War room, a research library. I see books from, are regarding WW2, European history, the Vietnam War, international politics, the Roman military history, ancient Greek. So, Looks like a pretty good size military media center. Oh wow, check out these old newspaper headlines. The St. Louis Star Times, War Declared. That's the Second World War Declared. Again, the Honolulu Star, bombed by Japanese planes. So here's some from uh, the day of or the day after the Pearl Harbor attacks. Now we are entering the war to end all wars, World War I, which obviously did not end all wars. It's a gas mask from the era. A couple of them in here behind glass. Up above, some of the airplanes used during WW1. This is a German MG08 machine gun. So I assume the, the fellas back there are wearing German WW1 uniforms. And I should note some of these displays have a QR code if you want more information. Use your phone, scan the code. Some more WW1 memorabilia, or artifacts I should say. Uh, looks like canteens there, old rusted out canteens. An army campaign hat. Another gas mask, which was a terrible, terrible thing back in the, uh, the First World War. This room has a touch screen, so you can look up different information. There's one on the biplane we saw up above. Actually, more of the planes, so you can just click on that and learn more about the planes. Which reminds me of a future video that Nikki and I are booking right now. We're going to go do an aerobatic biplane experience, so if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, or click the bell notification button. Do that because that is gonna be a fun video. Now, I am trying to get the aerobatic one that's gonna do flips and stuff. A biplane, you know, open cockpit, all that stuff. So click that subscribe button. Don't miss that video coming soon. Here's a cool display of all the different types of bayonets used. And again, they have a, a, a touch screen here to learn more about the bayonets. The next room, I'm going to assume, is WW2 because we have a Jeep. A Navy Jeep, in fact. And Jeep was created in 1941, so of course this is the Second World War. And this particular section, since it has the Navy Jeep and all types of ships and submarines, one can only assume it's dedicated to the WW2 Navy. My brother-in-law is actually an admiral in the Navy right now. He is actually on a submarine. I guess I can say that. I don't think that's classified information. Oh goodness, look at this. This is actually a Nazi machine gun. Yep, we are staring down the barrel of a Nazi machine gun. The biplane I'm actually going to go in, I think was like a 1940s something biplane, so 
Looking forward to that. Gonna be a very unique experience with the open cockpit and everything. Continuing around the 10,000 square foot space. More displays. This one here, another just like complete Nazi display. Yeah, this whole wall and section dedicated to the German side. Actually, over here we have a Japanese uniform. Here is a uniform of one of the Tuskegee Airmen. We have a whole wall over here dedicated to that unit. This display here appears to be United States Marine Corps. It looks like these guys have their camp all set up, including... Can you see the helmet there? Looks like it's going to be used as a uh, as a bowl to cook up some stew or something. Now this is sweet looking. A U.S. Army motorcycle. Appears to be an Indian motorcycle, the manufacturer, the Indian. And check it out. A little holster there for the machine gun on the motorcycle. I just love, love that color green and the white star. The equipment in here was used for mine detection. Some United States Army uniforms. A look above will show you some of the aircraft used during WW2, such as the P-47 Thunderbolt, also known as the Jug. My favorite airplane was always the Mustang. That was kind of my, I always thought those were cool. Specifically the P-51D Mustang. Some of the bombs that would have been dropped from airplanes. Some of the airmen's jackets, bomber jackets and such, always very cool. More uniforms. Got a model of a tank up here. The Stewart tank, the M5. Even a military bicycle. See the painting of the planes there? Here's a photograph. And then over here, an actual piece of one of the airplanes. And here it is, as far as I'm concerned, as a Jeep owner, the star of the exhibit, a Willys M38 Jeep. Now, it's not on this plaque here, but if I recall my Jeep history correctly, Willys won the contract to build this all-purpose vehicle, and it was a general-purpose vehicle, so when the... When the soldiers would request a vehicle, they would ask for a general purpose vehicle, a GP. What does GP sound like? Jeep. And that is how Jeep got its name, because the Willys was the general purpose vehicle. The GP. The Jeep. I think that's correct. If someone knows their Jeep history better than me, let me know if I'm wrong or if I'm right. Even to this day, you can buy the Willys package of a Jeep. Kind of do a special theming and stuff like that, but um, that's why if you ever see like a Jeep that's a Willys edition, because it started out as Willys. I love this color of a Jeep too. Army green with the white star. Love it. Beautiful. In addition to loving Jeeps, I love dogs. And here's a little section dedicated to the military dogs. I guess I should note this entire section is for the Korean War. Even the Jeep. The Jeep born in 1941 for the Second World War, but also serviced the U.S. military in many encounters after that, including the Korean War, which, which you guys probably remember mostly from the TV show MASH. Here's a nice big display of an armored car. I'm not gonna lie, the little kid inside of Rick is geeking out right now with all the G.I. Joes. Oh boy. I didn't see the one I owned as a kid. I had the one that had like the beard 
in the Kung Fu grip. And then the second to last section of the museum is dedicated to the Vietnam War. A 20 year war, 1955 to 1975. The use of helicopters in that war, a very big deal. U.S. military uniforms used in the Vietnam War. And then over here is a uniform of a female officer for the North Vietnamese Army. Actually, a captain's uniform. And the last section, sort of the modern room, features Desert Storm and no longer a Jeep commonly known as a Hummer or a Humvee the vehicle of choice I still prefer the Jeep this room is set up for presentations and TV screen right there with different information being presented and then here's all your uniforms from Coast Guard, Air Force, Navy, Army, Marine Corps. Fun fact, in high school I was in ROTC and it was the Marine Corps ROTC. I love the Marine Corps, the, oh boy their dress blues are just, I think the best formal uniform. Up above here, helicopter models. Fun fact, both me and my father worked on the uh, Apache longbow program for Lockheed Martin. That was a long time ago, long, long time ago. Uh, but one of my first jobs out of college was working on the fire control system for the longbow Apache. And now Epic Universe is being built around the old Lockheed Martin facilities that I used to work at. And here we are back outside by my Jeep. The white Jeep with the black star. That's what we use for the road trips. Though many of you know I used to own an army green Jeep with a white star. But for the road trips, it's this white one. Uh, but thanks for joining me on this road trip and this Florida food tour. And as always, adventure is out there. You can find it on a road trip. See you next time. I left my windows open the whole time. I hope that bug flew out. <laughs>